Hi, I'm Alex, I'm a PJ Golf Professional, and welcome down to the channel. Have you had a mint week so far? Right, okay. I don't know any golfer that doesn't want to hit up with driver, but I know a lot of golfers that are struggling with it. I'm gonna give you a simple process of some things that you can do pre-swing, so some pre-swing checkpoints before we even pulled the trigger with driver, and then some simple drills that you can do in swing to help you hone these skills. By the way, I'm gonna point this out, you can take this straight out onto the golf course. Let's get into the video. Now, I wanna keep reminding you of this because this channel is powered by you, the viewers, right? So today's tip request comes from Aaron H. She said, Alex, I need help. We've got this covered here and you two watching this. I can't get my angle of attack to be positive with my driver. I always hit two or four degrees on the down, no matter what I do. Right, how can we get this? And just to explain, hitting down would be, say my fist is the golf ball and my right hand is my golf club. Coming down or coming up relative to where that golf ball is, is absolutely key if you want to start hitting this golf ball longer. Who doesn't want to do that? So first thing is first, tee height. Nice and simply, when you're teeing your golf ball up with driver, this can have a significant effect on your ability to hit up on the golf ball. So just give it a little check now. I want you to, at the very minimum, if we're looking to hit up on this golf ball better and really encourage this, is to have that ball half a ball above the face. That is paramount. We have to be in that situation. So pre-swing number one is tee height. Okay, pre-swing number two is ball position. And I like to think of it like this. On the golf course, I want a routine I can stick to that has a little bit of rhythm. So, I check my tee height, I turn my left toe out, okay? And I just move my right foot away for a right-handed golfer. Now, by doing this, I am guaranteeing that my ball position is inside my left heel exactly like that. So simply, left toe, right foot. <laughs> left toe, right foot. There's not too much to that. If you're left-handed, we would just simply move our left foot away. So we've got two pre-swing factors, ball position and T height. Now the final pre-swing factor that I like to have here is our shoulder position. Now anytime that our shoulders are a little bit level or let's say left shoulder below right for a right-handed player this would create more of a chopping down action now if i had the opposite to the opposite extreme look how i would actually miss that golf ball and go up and over that so i'd go essentially too much on the up so we want a lovely happy medium between them both so to cap off the pre-swing we check our tee height left toe out, right foot away, and all I want you to do is gripping it in your left hand firstly, get that grip nailed on, is go and put your right hand on your right thigh. Slide it down until it touches your knee, and then put your right hand on the golf club. Can you see now how my shoulders are set slightly on the up? Now, I've got to think about how I can maintain this in the swing now to allow me to hit it, but that is all pre-swing is. Right, here we go. We do not want that back. Okay, in swing drill now. I know you'll love. Okay guys, just quickly, I wanna give you a little piece of advice. I've been seeing a few people saying, should I use hybrids or should I use long irons? Now, simply, I think of it like this. If you're a golfer, above like sort of a 12 to 15 handicap, I would 100% recommend substituting your five and four iron for five and four hybrids. Now, if you're a golfer in single figures and slightly below, it doesn't hurt to use a hybrid. I think they're really versatile clubs and they're a little bit easier to hit just because they're a bit of a bigger profile. So just a simple piece of advice there. Right, group in front have just gone. Let's get on to the final part of the in-swing part of this tip. Okay, for this next part, this is great, I love this drill, and that's something I actually used yesterday morning uh, on the lesson tee. All you're gonna need is a box of balls. So, as I said before, you could, and potentially what Aaron was having here, is maybe a good setup, but not maintaining that through the golf ball. What I want you to do is not be too precise with this, but go one, two, and a little bit ahead, and place 
that box of balls. Now, you should never be able to hit it even on your worst, but what it will encourage you to do, because you don't want to hit your balls, do you? We want to feel as though we're swinging over that box. And I would actually encourage golfers to do this. Feel as though when you're addressing the golf ball on your practice swing, can I just brush this ground before the golf ball? Because if you're doing that, we know then as after we brush the ground, our golf club's going to start to work on the up. So nice and simply, above the box, above the box, above the box. And I'm trying to contact that ground on a practice swing, on a practice swing, somewhere around here. Now I'm not making a big divot. All I'm doing is bruising and brushing it. Okay, nice and simple. Work through your full routine. See height, left, right, down your right thigh, hold your golf club. And that box is a great reminder to feel as though where I start, I want to come back to. My shoulders are on this angle at address. I don't want to change that and come in it like this. Here we go. That was, oh my God. I literally think that's the best drive I've ever hit in my life. That is long. <laughs> so guys, that wraps us up for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if there's anything that you're struggling with in your golf game, get down in the comments. Cheers.